and uh, it's labeled there Newton's Law of Cooling. When things are cooling down, uh, the rate at which they're cooling is dy dt, where y represents the temperature at any given time, and t represents the time. It's proportional to, it just mean, when, when we read the word proportional to, it just means it's that uh, you could read it like this. The, the rate of change is equal to a constant times, right? so up to the point that we read, it's proportional to, that's all it means. Constant times a variable or something with a variable in it, a variable expression of some kind, to the current temperature, so y, minus the current, or the, uh, the surrounding temperature, the constant surrounding temperature. Um, you can fill things in here, not a whole lot to fill in. And we've got dy dt is equal to some constant that we don't know, times y, which is a variable, minus a, which we've been told. Now the thing, the mistake that I made in class was uh, setting it up like we could just represent it with this equation. Y equals C E to the KT. Now this is an exponential decay kind of a situation, but this equation assumes basically like for, for, this, uh, for this example that the room temperature is zero degrees, like it, it's coming down and approaching zero. But it's not approaching. That, that was my mistake there. So, well, we actually could not use any calculus and solve this problem. Let's not, not use calculus, let's use calculus. Because this is the, the very kind of problem that they would expect you to be able to solve. This is probably uh, mid to high level, maybe 75% of the max of uh, like what they expect you to be able to do, okay? Um, so it's so an equation a lot like this. So here we are. Uh, now we need to find, uh, well, what are we trying to do? They get us a bunch of information. They, the actual question they ask, or the, what they tell us to do, is to find the core temperature five hours after the object is removed from the furnace. To do that, we need a function that tells us the temperature at any given time. Well, what function is that? What tells us the temperature at any time? Derivative? Like the slope? The derivative would tell us how fast the temperature is changing. So what we're looking for is here y. Whatever the value of y is at, at time t, then that would be the temperature. The value of y is the temperature of the thing, the object. I think they could have gotten a little more creative than object. Kind of, what kinds of things come out of furnaces that just don't feel like being bread. bread? That's a really hot bread. Scalding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of something in um, Metal. this is York's class. Kiln stuff like, is a furnace the same thing as a kiln? Sure. Okay, then pottery. A vase. A vase. A, vase. a, vase. <laughs> a pottery is just a feeling like. A pottery. <laughs> too vague. That's fine. A vase. A vase, a mug, a plate, a bowl, whatever. It's fancy, it's a vase. A vase. All right, so we, to figure out how much the, what the temperature is at five hours, we need to be able to have a function that we can plug by into, and it tells us why, and we don't. Uh, we have a function that we can plug the temperature into, or right here, the temperature into, if we knew this constant k, and then tell how fast the temperature is changing. We don't have the function. So we want y, we don't want dy dt, we want y, right? Now we realize we've got a differential equation, we've got to separate these variables, take the derivative of both sides, and so on. Okay. Can someone separate these variables and tell me what it's going to look like? So you could do the d one by dt on both sides? Yes. You've got to get those dt's, dy's, things out of yeah. the denominators. So yeah, let's do that. Or do you want to do it all at once? I was gonna say we could, yeah, I was gonna say we could multiply the dt on both sides and yeah. divide the y minus 80 on both sides. So we'll wind up with dy over y minus 80 equals k dt. Okay, remember k is just a constant, k might be five or seven, it's just a number multiplied by dt. So that's the 
antiderivative. You know what? We can. We have a constant multiple, so it can so come outside can yeah. of the antiderivative. All right. So what is the antiderivative of dy over y minus ad? Because wouldn't dy just be like y in a sense? dy would just be y. Natural log of yeah. Well, we got a function, yeah. and it's derivative. So it'd be the du natural. over u, right? You take the derivative of this, you'll get dy. You'll just get dy minus zero. The natural log of y minus eighty. Mm -hmm. This side is the natural log of y minus eighty. And, and there's no like adjusting, right? If you take the derivative of y minus eighty, you get exactly dy. Watch out for <coughs> times when you might get like a like it might be minus y, and so you get a negative dy if you take the derivative. Yeah, that's how it was with uh, in one with, like number four, I think it was. So when you got wrong when you checked it, or yeah, it, yeah, because I was doing the videos and I did uh -huh. it on my own before you did it, uh -huh. and I did because it was the first one was four or y plus two, but then it was four minus y. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where it, like screwed me up. I like that. Did you, did you watch the video? Yeah. That you did, and uh, I don't know if I'll do that again. Yeah, and I had the solutions manual, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I mentioned this to Hannah before, and she said, you have a solutions manual. You can just post that. And I should. So I'll probably do that. It was helpful, though. It was, yeah. I thought you did it. I said I did, but I ran out of time to watch the video. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, yeah. That's, uh, I wish I could do everything possible, but I, it's not possible. <laughs> All right, what's the antiderivative of dt? Just t, the derivative of t. Let's let's just say the derivative of t is dt. Okay. So we have k times the antiderivative of dt, which is just t. If you took the derivative of t, you would just get one, right? So essentially, like the, the actual thing you're trying to take the antiderivative of is just whatever dt is multiplied by. Let's multiply by the number one. Yeah. To get one as your derivative, you just have to have t. Plus c, right? Plus c. Okay. Why don't we put plus c over here? Because you did the whole, oh, there's only one constant in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, actually. I'll just, that's, oh, that's, uh, oh boy, let's see. I can just barely get it, I think. Um, yeah, I could put a plus C right here. All right, we could call that C1 and C2, but then we could just subtract C1 from both sides. We'll just have one constant on one side. And we might as well just have one constant on one side and just call it C. I understand they, they do both need to have a plus c, it's just that we can combine them into one c. A lot of these c's get combined and changed, multiplied by numbers and all that kind of stuff, but they're still just representing a constant, even though that constant seems like, I don't know, it's being changed somehow. Anyway, now we have the natural log of y, which is the thing we're, we're trying to get this by itself, trying to get the function y. Right, so how do we get the function y by itself or get close to doing that? Yeah, we'll uh, write this in exponential form. e to the kt plus c equals y minus 80. And then you can make that c times e to the kt. Yeah, can somebody justify, okay, let me, again, so I'll call this c1, all right. Uh, this one is also c1, okay. These are the same c values, definitely. But I can change this to c times e to the kt. Now, this c, it is not necessarily the same as this C in fact, it's not. The you're, same. You're, are you still putting K in that exponent of E? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. it doesn't look like it, does it? I, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's a good thing to say. Uh, so <coughs> can anybody justify why it is that we can take it from being a plus C in the numerator to a C times E to the KT, and keep in mind this C is not the same as this C. Because you can separate that to E KT plus E to C1. So if, we have, if we're adding exponents, we can think of it as a result of multiplying two things that have the same base. We add the exponents. Like x squared times x to the third is x to the fifth, because we add their exponents. So we could do this over and say, well, this is the same as multiplying this by e to the c, whatever that c is. Right? And now this e to the c, e is a constant, c is a constant, e to the a constant raised to a constant is a constant. So let's just give that constant the name c, and we'll make it multiplied by c. e to the kt here is multiplied by this becomes the c we're talking about. 
Anytime you have that e to the kt plus c, you can always just, it's not the same c. It's not just a, like a property that the, that number can come down and multiply by that. But we can call it another constant and, and write it as c times e to the kt. E equals y minus 80. We just need to get y by itself. Yes? Do we have to leave y minus 80 still at an absolute value? That's that just like a good question. Value. And uh, I'm going to say no, because uh, if you raise e to an exponent, you'll never get a negative number, right? The, the result of raising e to an exponent will never result in a negative. Okay. So this will always be positive. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even if you raise e to a fraction or a negative number or whatever, it's always going to be a positive. As I was writing that down and knowing that we were going to do these steps, I was thinking to myself, I know these the opposite values are going to disappear right now. And I'm going to have a good reason. <coughs> so, okay. Thanks for making me think about it. Yeah. So we're getting y by itself. How do we get y by itself? So just a simple, simple algebra. y equals c to the kt plus 80. Okay, if we were going to be able to plug 5 in here, we'd have to know what c is, and we'd have to know what k is. Hmm. But don't we... Can't we figure out, like, kind of what? Why? Figure those out? Because wouldn't we just put, like, 1500 as y? 1500 as y. Because then we can figure out what c equals. 1500 is y. What about, what else did we know when, when y is 1500? We know t. T is, is zero because that's zero. zero. Yeah, when it comes out, right? That's times yeah. zero. That starts it all off. Time zero, ground zero, patient zero. Starting, that's where it starts. Because then k will just become zero, and then e mm -hmm. will just become k one. K times zero is zero, so that's a really convenient, nice thing that allows us to solve. If we, it was still possible to solve for both of them, even if we didn't get the convenient zero, but sure is nice that they gave us a zero, because this happens. k times zero is zero, e to the zero is one. That's a nice thing. Plus 80 equals 1,500. k gets eliminated by being multiplied by zero, e to the 0 is 1. 1 times c is c, plus 80 is 1,500. So subtract 80. So subtract 80, and c is equal to 1,420. Now we know c, but we still don't know what? k. We still don't know k, but what can we do about that? Um, now we can just, now we know c. Yeah. yeah. Because then the final temperature at our, what was it? Five. Was it five? We want to know about time five. That's what we're going to find out. But what else do we know? The one hour. One hour, one hour, one hour yeah. So now we can use that data point with C plugged in. And so 1120 okay. can be Y. So 1120 mm -hmm. equals uh, 1420 E K to one. K times one yeah. plus, plus 80. Plus 80, yeah. Equals, what uh, was 1120. it? 1120. 1120? Yeah. 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 All right, so we solve for K, which is in the exponent of E, which means we're going to use a natural log here soon, right? OK, uh, subtract 80 on both sides. We've got 1420 equals 10. 1040. 40. Yeah. 1040. Oh. Uh, times e to the k, times 1, it's k. Divide both sides by 1420, e to the k equals, let's keep it exact for as long as possible. So 1040 over 1420, we could simplify that a little bit. Yeah, you can take off some zeros. We can at least go to 104 over 42. Okay, so we'll get rid of that, or 142. That's divisible by 2, it's divisible by maybe more than that.
Okay, so e to the k is equal to 52 over 71, so I'm going to get k by itself. Natural log of 52 over 71 equals k. Now we know what k is. And we can fill in everything, c and k. And now the only two variables will be t and y. And that's great. That's perfect for us. Um, bring it back up to here. So what did we have? What was it? Y, y equals 1420 e to the natural log of 52 over 71 times 5. Times 5, yep. Plus 8. We're going to plug in 5 plus 8. Plus 8. OK? We can plug this in and uh, get our calculator to tell us what it is, as long as we're careful with our parentheses and the exponents and all that kind of stuff. Also, I just want to show you something, remind you of something. That e to the x and the natural log of x are inverse functions, just like 3x and x over 3 and x to the third and the third root of x. They undo each other. So when you put one inside the other, there's this undoing thing that happens. Okay? So <coughs> here's what I'm going to do. Write e to the natural log of 52 over 71 and raise that to the fifth. Is that the same? Yeah. Now we're multi if I raise this to a power, if I want to put it all together, I would multiply the powers together, right? So I'm just kind of separating them. Now I have e to the natural log of 52 over 71. Anytime the number here, the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are the same, they cancel each other out. And we just get 52 over 71. Times 52 over 71 to the fifth plus 80. Okay, so we could uh, conceivably do this by hand. So after five hours, there you go. That's how hot it is. Can we do 34? 34. Was it tied in? 30 what? 34. Okay, the thing about half-life is we can use this function, y equals c times e to the kt. Because this is getting closer and closer and closer to being zero. Not 80, but zero. What's this? important thing to realize when we are talking about half-lives that is a standard exponential function, meaning that uh, if it's exponential decay, which this is, it's going down at an exponential rate and approaching zero, approaching none of this stuff being left. Right? It doesn't ever quite get there uh, in theory. Or if it's exponential growth, it starts off being really near zero and then takes off and grows really, really fast. Right? Like a YouTube video. 
starts at nothing, gets mm -hmm. posted, grows, the views grow exponentially if it goes viral. Okay. So if it does, pardon me for a moment, Since it fits this exponential model, we can kind of plug it stuff in and figure our way around it, okay? Um, let's see. Well, it basically comes down, <clears throat> if we want to figure out how many grams are left after a thousand years, around 34, if we wanted to figure out uh, the initial quantity and how much there is after 10,000 years, then we need a function to plug things into. Uh, the initial quantity, if you remember, is C. When you figure out what C is, that actually is the initial quantity, so that'll be good. Uh, and then once we have C and we have K, we can plug in 10,000 and figure out how much is left. Does that make sense? Okay, and we have a function that we can use. So we don't actually need any calculus, we need just kind of understanding of the expon exponential functions and logarithms. And an understanding of this function. Are there any Y and T values that we know? We know why. We know why is what? 1.5. 1. 1. 1.5. Do we know when that happens? A thousand years. Do we also know t? So y is 1.5. That's equal to c, whatever that mystery amount is, times e to the k times 1,000. All right. So we can get one of these variables by itself, like c or k. We can see by itself by dividing both sides by that quantity, or we can uh, do some little logarithmic magic and get k by itself. Right? But we still don't get as much closer. We have to know basically two pieces of information. That's what we need to yeah? get. How did you find why I was, sorry, I must have missed it, the 1.5? Oh, goodness gracious, I was looking at 33 and ah, I was real right. confused. We are doing 34 right now. Genius. That's what I am. Genius. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. If this is a, a pretty basic kind of a problem, it's a system of equations, meaning that, uh, or we need to construct a system of equations. We have two things that we don't know, which means we need the same equation to have values plugged into it two times. Does that make sense? Right? Yes. I've got to have two equations with separate, from separate pieces of information that I can use to like solve for one, take that, plug it into the other, and solve for the other. Talk about C and K there. Um, so we have to know some other information. Do we know at another time how much will be left? At times zero? At half the time. At half the time? Sorry, I'm telling you this, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> Something about half. We do. How long does it take for there to be half? 1,500 times. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we fill this equation in somehow like that? Mm -hmm. But the number of years in for t. Which would be? Okay. Let's do that. C times e to the k times 1599 yeah. equals what? C represent? The initial. Okay, we don't know what the initial amount is, right? No. But let's say we started out with 100. How much would be left after 1,599 years? 50. 50. It would be one half of C. Whatever C is, one half of that, right? And we would get it, I, I guess we could equal, equal C over 2, uh, or we could just say, in the process of trying to solve for k, I'll always start out by dividing by this number, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
whether this is a thousand or a hundred or fifty or two or ten or whatever, this will be half of that. And as I start to solve it, I'll always divide by this number. Right? Try it yourself. Put in three different values, put in 150, put a thousand and five hundred and whatever, and then start to solve it, you'll start by dividing by this because you want to get k by itself. So the result of that, for a half-life problem, will always be that you plug in one half-life, you divide both sides by c, and you wind up with half. Right? Okay, so we can always do that. Always, always. Doesn't mean we know what C is, but now we can solve for K, and then we can solve for C, and then we'll have it. Okay. How do we solve for K? Uh, natural log. The natural log. The natural log of yeah. one half, which is a number, right? We can take the natural log of one half. Um, equals K times fifteen hundred ninety nine. And then K. Divided by fifteen ninety nine. Natural log of one half over fifteen ninety nine is k. Now we know k. We can plug in k. We can solve for c. One point five equals c e to the natural log of one half over fifteen ninety nine times thousand. We're going to solve for c. Let's see. Natural log of one half over fifteen ninety nine times a thousand. The exponent thing? Right? Oh, we could. Yeah, we could. 1.5. We'll see. We can do e to the natural log of 1 half. Raise all of that to the 1,000 over 1599. What is e to the natural log of 1 half? 1 half. The thing, though, we're still going to need our calculators to take 1 half to the 10,000 over 1599 power. What are we, once you figure out what that's going to do, it's just divide both sides by that, yeah? So we'll just kind of do that in one step. 1 1.5 divided by uh, 1.5 to the room parentheses 1,000 divided by 1599. 2.3, I'm going to go out a lot of decimal places so that I can get a pretty accurate result over here. So 2.31394. Is about 2.31394. So now we know k, we know c to a lot of decimal places, and so we have a function. And we have all the stuff we need to make this function. y equals c, which is 2.31394 e to the k, which is the natural log of 1 half over 1599 times t. Which we'll use to plug 10,000 into. Yeah. Y equals to 2.31394 e to the natural log of 1 half over 1599 times 10,000. Use our calculators, plug away, and find out 0 0.03. What is it? 0 0.03. 0 0.03? When I was like watching the, your video and everything, it, it really did help out a lot. Good. And like, cause I was so confused over the section that like made no sense. And like, some of them I was still really confused about, but it's, and like, I'm still really confused about all this stuff, but yeah. it's. We're gonna get more practice in Yeah, it's making a lot more sense. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to Yeah, it's, it's really, it's it's really like difficult to like figure out what to, kind of, how to, how to start it. Yeah, because a lot of this stuff, it's, we can't just say like, oh, look how many bunnies I have, and then I can do two bunnies, and not like that. Yeah. You can't visualize the uh, the operations that are going on. When you take the antiderivative, it seems a little bit like magic. Yeah. A little bit is. I mean, we're using things we don't really understand to solve these problems. Yeah. So. Well, because a lot of things like now, like we're trying to learn, like they cancel out like the e and the natural log. Like I I didn't really know that until this. 
Yeah, it was a long time ago. I don't even know if we talked about it. We, I, we might have hit on it really quickly this year. We, we cut out. I think it was more last year. Well, I'm going to cut questions off and let's get out a piece of paper and uh, see what we can do on a couple of problems. Like we have the homework.